here with third year women's co-head coach Brooke Storr. Coach, uh, back at home Thursday, it's been a weird part of the schedule. You played 10 January games, you played your first four conference games in eight days, and here you are playing twice in a span of about 12 days. I'm sure it's been an adjustment for you and for the team. Well, it has, but I think it's been good. We've been able to get back in, in the practice mode and, and work some things out, um, work on our execution offensively. We struggled to score a little bit as of late, and um, some of that comes throughout the season when you know you don't get enough practice time. You're just preparing for opponent after opponent. So I think it's been good for us to just get in the gym and uh, correct some mistakes and work on some things and, and really try to build on uh, the things that we've done well. Not only that, but it probably helps that 20, 20, 22 games in the season, you're getting a chance to heal some aches and pains, bumps and bruises, little nagging things as well. Yeah, I think just for their bodies and minds to be refreshed, I, I feel like it. You you almost want at the time you're you're thinking, oh, we're playing a lot of games in you know very few days, but I think it worked out well for us. We got off to a good start. We were able to get um, a lot of games behind us and. Um, now we've had a little bit of time to recover and, and refresh, um, like I said, our minds and our bodies, and I think it'll, it'll be good as we kind of head down this stretch run. You recover, you refresh, and you rematch now. You're into that part of the Southland schedule where you're playing the home and homes, and Central Arkansas comes down here up there was, uh, was such a weird game because you didn't shoot the ball poorly, you didn't necessarily turn the ball over, but you, you lost by 17. It was kind of hard to, for an outsider maybe to figure out. Yeah, we didn't we didn't execute very well offensively. I got off to a great start. I think we you know start the game 11 to three and um, got some Janelle made some tough shots to start, but never really felt like we got into much of an offensive flow. And, and you know a lot of that's due in part to uh, Central Arkansas's defense, and they've done a great job over the last couple of years uh, with Sandra of defending and forcing people to take tough contested shots and. Um, we've got to get to the free throw line, we've got to be aggressive, and we've got to find ways to score, whether that be from uh, creating opportunities off the offensive glass or for rebound or for transition points or off of turnovers. And, um, you know, I think that's some, some things that we talked a lot about and watched some film on and addressed in practice over the last few weeks of being able to generate a little bit more offense uh, than we have the last week and a half. Certainly defensively is going to be uh, key to find Maggie Profit. Yeah, I think, you know, she's shooting it really, really well. Had not shot it great until we played them. And then, um, you know, thanks to us, she got kick-started and has shot the ball extremely well the last three games, um, including our game and then at Southeastern and then home against New Orleans last Saturday. So she's definitely someone that can shoot the basketball. You've got to know where she is in transition. You've got to find her in the half court, whether you're in, you know, matched up with her in man or um, in the zone. So. Uh, she'll be a big focus for us as far as not allowing her to get clean looks and um, knowing where she is at all times. Just looking at the numbers in this rivalry, it's a very evenly matched series and you know, you, similar in a lot of even statistical categories, you're one and two in fewest fouls per game in the South on this year. Is, what, are the, what do you think, do you see similarities in, in yourselves or is this just kind of a... a um, I think they play somewhat of a possession style uh, type. They want to be, they want to grind it out. They want to force you to play at their pace. And they're not one that's going to get up and down just a whole lot. They're going to take their opportunities when they get them, but they're not going to turn the ball over and waste possessions. Um, and they're going to really put a lot of emphasis on the defensive end of the floor and rebounding the basketball and not allowing you extra opportunities to score. And um, you know, those are some of the areas that we focus in on of you know limiting extra possessions for other teams and valuing the basketball and. Um, so I think that you know we're similar in that respect. Um, I think we're you know different in a lot of areas too. But um, it's been interesting. We've yet to win up there, and in, in the three years we've been here, and then we've beaten them here both years. So um, hopefully that continues on Thursday, and we'll we'll keep it at 500. Well, and then you turn around and we go from playing once in a week. Now you turn around and go Saturday to McNeese, and it's very similar. Where they're co you're coming off a big win uh, against them earlier this season, and and maybe. One of your more complete performances of the year that Saturday against the Cowgirls. Yeah, I think offensively we were pretty good, um, and that was the game before we went to to UCA. I thought we shared the basketball very well, um, had a lot of assists, um, got out in transition, created some turnovers that led to some scores for us, and I thought we defended really well. Um, had the, held them into the 40s, and then they scored, I think, six points late in the game um, on some substitutions. So we've got to do a great job. They've got a couple of kids that can really score in um, Allison Baggett and. Jalen Johnson, and then you have Amber Donna's on the perimeter that just kind of does a little bit of everything for them. It's kind of their glue type player. Um, but those players are, um, you know, 
threat to score, you know, 15 to 20 a night. And you've, you've got to do a great job of knowing where they are, not allowing them to get to the free throw line and, and really penetrate and, and get to the rim on us. And that's something you guys did a really good job of in that first matchup. I don't think either Johnson nor Baggett got to double figures, but Talisa Boyd, a Natchitoches Central product, did have a big game. So. Again, it, like you talk about, you want balance from them. You want to also eliminate balance from an opponent. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and we're going to try to take away the opponent's best score um, in, in each matchup. And, you know, the, that goes with Baggett and Johnson. And so at some point you're going to give up something. We've got to rebound the basketball a little bit better. We didn't box Boyd out, and she had tremendous energy on the boards. And um, obviously for her, this is a big game coming back to Natchitoches. And um, she had a double-double and played very well. We're going to have to find her. Um, in and around the paint and put a body on her and not allow her to get to, to the offensive glass and keep her off the defensive boards as well. And as always, it's a McNeese State, Northwestern State rivalry. So there's probably a little bit that goes into that game as well, a little bit of emotional. Yeah, I think our, our players get excited. You know, it's in state rivalry. Um, you know, their coaching staff does a great job and I know that they'll be prepared and be ready for us. Um, I know Brooks won't let them forget w what the outcome of the game was here. Um, a couple weeks ago so they'll be ready to go our players will be ready to go um, I think again it's anytime you can match up with someone in state you want to take care of uh, take care of business and we've got to be very solid on Thursday and then very solid on Saturday excellent thank you coach